Wheat futures prices are up 60% so far this year, and after a heat wave damaged crops in India, the country announced last week an immediate ban on wheat exports. The Indian government said that a spike in prices is threatening the security of a vital commodity, both for India and for other vulnerable countries. India is the world's second biggest wheat producer after China. Thanks in part to a bumper harvest last year, they had been able to fill the gap in markets left by decreased output from Ukraine, even as bad weather reduced the crops of the other big grain exporters. In the global food system, supply-demand problems were previously mostly down to weather and other supply-related factors. In the last few years, the global pandemic tested and in many ways proved the resilience of the global food supply system. But now, with the war in Ukraine, we're seeing severe problems in the global food supply chain, and it's difficult to predict the medium or long-term implications. These new issues are occurring on top of an already tight but at least functional food supply chain. Before the war in Ukraine, food prices had already risen 18% over the pandemic. Globally, there are six breadbasket countries that together supply roughly two-thirds of global agricultural commodities. Ukraine has long been one of the most important of these countries, producing food not just for its own population, but for people around the world. Additionally, Ukraine produces a lot of fertilizer. 57% of the land in Ukraine was used for growing crops in 2019, making it one of the most highly cultivated countries in the world. By comparison, in the same year, the United States actively used 17% of its land for cultivation. Ukraine accounts for 30% of the world's supply of sunflower oil, widely used in food production, and grows 4% of the world's wheat. While 4% may not sound like a huge number, the fact that they produce much more than they consume means that Ukraine accounts for around 10% of global wheat exports, 13% of corn exports, and is the world's largest producer of sunflower oil. Normally, the country exports 40 million to 50 million tons of cereals every year, but Russia's invasion meant export volumes in March were a quarter of those in February. The black soil in Ukraine is unusually fertile. Its farmland is cheaper to run than that in Europe and the United States. The country has deep seaports that give it easy access to international markets. This combination has allowed Ukraine to become a key exporter of agricultural commodities and to be described as the breadbasket of Europe. China is another important breadbasket, Food produced by China makes up around 20% of total world exports. The zero-COVID policy being enforced in China means that many farmers there are unable to work and far less food is being produced than normal. 25 million tons of grain are currently stuck in Ukrainian ports that are being blockaded by Russian forces. Ukrainians have only managed to transport a fraction of their last harvest by rail. The problem is that Ukraine has a different track gauge to the rest of Europe, so freight cars can't just pass through. The grain needs to be unloaded and reloaded at borders, causing a bottleneck. With swathes of Ukrainian farmland having turned into battlefields and the country's road and port infrastructure under attack by Russian missiles and bombs, Ukraine's food supply chain is entirely seized up. There are limitations on farm working hours because of curfews, and there are limits on the movement of agricultural equipment because of controls on the roads. Even if peace was declared tomorrow, the fields of Ukraine are filled with unexploded ordnance, which farmers would need to clear. Farming equipment has been destroyed, skilled workers have been lost to the war, and the time window for preparing fields for planting has passed. It's important to note that access to food is of urgent concern for the millions of Ukrainians impacted directly by this tragic invasion, so I must acknowledge that vital priority. The damage to Ukraine's transportation infrastructure has made getting food to internally displaced people extremely difficult. 
The World Food Program estimates that 45% of the population of Ukraine is worried about finding enough food to eat. Right now, we don't know how long the conflict will last in Ukraine, but between 19 million and 34 million tons of export production could disappear this year. Next year, depending on the situation in Ukraine, the figure could be between 10 million and 43 million tons. That translates into the necessary caloric intake for 60 million to 150 million people. Apart from the obvious issues of people going hungry, a reduction in food supply means that prices can be expected to rise, and these higher prices will affect an even broader range of the world's population, well beyond 150 million people. Another problem the world is facing is a shortage of the ingredients that go into synthetic fertilizers, which in some cases have tripled in price since the start of the pandemic. Several problems contribute to this shortage, including the Russian invasion of Ukraine, supply chain issues caused by storms, and high natural gas prices. For the first time ever, farmers the world over all at once are testing the limits of how little fertilizer they can apply without devastating farm yields come harvest time. The nitrogen used in most synthetic fertilizers is made by combining the nitrogen in the air with hydrogen in methane to produce ammonia, which is then used to create other forms of nitrogen, including ammonium nitrate and urea. Natural gas is used in this process both to provide the methane needed and as a heat source for the reaction. Higher natural gas prices mean more expensive fertilizer. Potash, traded in Vancouver, has almost tripled in price since the start of the war in Ukraine. This is good for Canada, which is the largest producer of potash in the world, but bad for farmers and bad for food prices. Russia and Belarus are the number two and three producers of potash in the world. Reduced grain exports from Ukraine will hit particularly hard in Africa and the Middle East, where much of the country's wheat goes. Ukraine accounts for 80% of Lebanon's wheat imports and is a leading supplier for countries including Somalia, Syria and Libya. Egypt imports almost two-thirds of the wheat it consumes, making it the world's largest wheat importer. More than 80% of the wheat Egypt imports comes from Russia and Ukraine. And while a lot of the imports are for domestic consumption, Egypt also processes these commodities to export to Eastern Africa. So the impact of the war in Ukraine will be felt across many nations. Poor countries which are already facing widespread hunger will feel the pain the most. The World Bank has warned that for each percentage point increase in food prices, 10 million additional people are thrown into extreme poverty worldwide. Countries that are food exporters are less likely to suffer, and countries like China that have a strategic grain reserve are better positioned than most. In fact, China may well decide to use some of their strategic grain reserves for diplomatic purposes to generate goodwill from countries that are suffering. So how concerned should we be about global food shortages? It's difficult to say right now as we need to keep an eye on incoming data in the coming weeks and months. But at present, the situation looks worse than it did during the last food price crisis that happened in 2007 and 2008. A limited disruption scenario would still likely have an impact that lasts until 2024. In such a scenario, we miss one planting season and see limited sanctions, at least relating to agricultural commodities and fertilizer. The reason that this would still have an impact out until 2024 is that farmers would take a while to recover to normal planting. Missing a harvest or being unable to export would leave farmers low on funds for seeds, fertilizer and agricultural equipment, making future harvests smaller. In a situation where the war drags out much longer, several planting and harvesting seasons could be missed. There could additionally be an escalation of sanctions, which at some point could also include some agricultural commodities. Or there might be governments that stop exporting vital commodities to countries that need them. This could result in significant problems in global food availability. 
The most recent period in history where we saw similar spikes in food prices was in 2007 and the first half of 2008. World prices for rice rose by 217%, wheat by 136%, corn by 125%, and soybeans by 107% over that period. The price rises brought about protests and riots in parts of Asia and Africa. High food prices are likely to cause government interventions, which can sometimes only add to the problem. Things like food export bans can reduce a farmer's profitability, leaving him underfunded to plant a larger crop for the next season. If you're interested in backtesting investment strategies using agricultural commodities as an input, it's easy to do using Composer, this week's video sponsor. Composer is an amazing website that allows investors who aren't coders to build, backtest, and invest in algorithm-based strategies. Explore their library of pre-made strategies, like this commodity momentum strategy that they designed, which has outperformed the S&P 500 by over 118% this year. Their strategy holds a given commodity if it has positive momentum, if it's doing better than medium-term treasury bonds. Using smart algorithms, the strategy shifts into commodities like agriculture, uranium, and timber, based on market movements. Or explore other strategies like Buy the Dips NASDAQ 100 that capitalizes on tech volatility using leveraged ETFs. This strategy is up 22% so far this year, while the NASDAQ 100 is down 27%. Before Composer, if you wanted to create a rules-based investment strategy, you needed to be a skilled coder, an Excel wizard, and pay hundreds if not thousands of dollars for expensive trading software. But with Composer, you can seamlessly drag, drop, edit, and swap investing blocks for free. Subscribers to my channel can sign up to Composer for free today using my link in the description below. Now, throughout history, people have argued that the world is running out of food and resources, and that's not the argument that I'm making, but it does appear that there might be quite a squeeze in the near term. It's probably reasonable to expect higher food prices if supplies remain constricted. There are fortunately a number of ways that these problems can be dealt with should they last longer than expected. While US corn farming is highly productive and typical yields fall between 140 and 160 bushels of corn per acre, unfortunately the food derived from all of that farming activity is considerably lower. The corn crop in the United States is mostly used for biofuels and animal feed. Around 40% of U.S. corn is used to make ethanol for use as fuel. The average Iowa cornfield has the potential to deliver more than 15 million calories per acre each year, which is enough to sustain 15 people per acre if we ate all of the corn ourselves. But with the current allocation of corn to ethanol and animal production, we end up with an estimated 3 million calories of food per acre per year, mainly as dairy and meat products, which is enough to sustain only 3 people per acre per year. That's lower than the average delivery of food calories from farms in Bangladesh, Egypt and Vietnam. The environmental credentials of using corn-derived ethanol as a fuel are being questioned right now. Dr. Tyler Lark from the University of Wisconsin did a study that found that ethanol is likely at least 24% more carbon intensive than gasoline due to emissions resulting from land use changes to grow corn along with processing and combustion. To be clear, some of the ethanol that is produced for fuel use is derived from other non-edible plant materials. An explosion of farming technology in the 1960s, known as the Green Revolution, raised agricultural output significantly. Today, further innovation could make a huge contribution to more secure and sustainable food production. Green technologies, biotech advances, and artificial intelligence could improve farming efficiency, reduce waste, and safeguard ocean resources. AI and modern sensors can be used to help food processors sort better, reducing food waste, and making better use of food byproducts. 
There are sensors being used by farmers that reduce calf mortality rates from birth-related complications by attaching a sensor to the cow's tail, which alerts the farmer when the cow needs assistance. Data and advanced analytics can also be used to better monitor and manage the seas to limit overfishing. Agriculture is a traditional industry, but one that's been benefiting more and more from modern technology. Food shortages are likely to drive further innovation in this space. If you enjoyed this video, you should watch my video on how the pandemic affected global housing prices next. Don't forget to check out today's video sponsor, Composer, using my link in the description below, along with their disclosure. See you later. Bye.